Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Today, I just came up with this idea. I thought it was pretty cool. So, um, earlier... Well, hold on. You might not be able to hear me. Just give me a minute. Okay, so, earlier... I, uh, well, a while ago, I had seen the comment, by the way, thank you, you know who you are, that suggested that I put Izuku into the world of Ruby, giving him the ability of essentially the Shadow Monarch powers from solo leveling. But, I have an even better idea. For you see... In the last episode of The Familiar's What If, I had suggested something. What if Deku had the abilities of Utopia? Now, you know who Utopia is. He was that beautiful specimen you just saw. Well, I don't know if it's a he or a she, but it's, it's essentially uh, the way I... Shush! The way I see it... I'm sorry about that. The way I see it, Utopia is a living city. You know how he appears in the first episode, well, in the episode that he appears in, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel. You know. And how he transforms out of what looks like to be a city. Well, he's a sentient city. And all of the other forms of Exodia are just different versions of said city. Just it's at different time periods. I'm okay. I heard you. Anyway, so uh, the way I'm gonna do this is Astral does exist. He is the guardian of everything. He is Astral, essentially. So the way that this is gonna work, Izuku is going to die you know, going out like a hero. Astral is going to see this, and he's like, let's give him another chance. And he's like, you know, it's been a while since the twin, I've talked to the twins. Now, quick, this is a bit of a, it's, well, Ruby came out a long time ago. I do believe everyone knows that there was originally two gods called the twin gods that basically caused all of the problems in Remnant currently. But, uh, that's not for me to say. But anyway, so, basically, Astral appears in the realm of the Twin Gods. You know, they're arguing, and, you know, Astral is like, listen, you two, I'm going to give this human the power of Xyz. You are going to give him an immense aura and you are going to give him regenerate, uh, wait, no, wait, or regenerate, so, and you're going to give him, I don't know, a semblance, I guess. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. You're both going to give him an immense aura, okay? That's basically what Astral tells them. So, you may be wondering, well, what's Izuku's semblance? His semblance is... You know, I've been wondering if the Xyz network uses two monsters to... C their bodies to create a new form then are the orbs energy? If so, you see where I'm going with this, I hope. Essentially, his semblance is to compress his aura to an unprecedented level. And while it's in these orbs, it's constantly gaining more charge. The exceeds material. Or the overlay units. When he uses an overlay unit, it'll enhance his all of his physical stats, granting him immense strength, speed, and durability for a temporary amount of time. 
now. You may be wondering, well, how does utop how do any of the utopias come into this? It's simple. They are all are his weapons. See, Izuku I'm gonna say Astral had changed Utopia into a blade. And by using an overlay unit, Izuku can awaken Utopia, allowing Izuku to, you know, armor up using Utopia. So, when he uses an overlay unit, it'll go into a, a gem on Utopia in a blade form, and then Utopia will begin to glow and then engulf Izuku in the light, granting him the armor. Now, Utopia in blade form, it's a pretty straight, you know, it's a straightforward straight sword. Except for at the hilt, it has two... Do uh, you know how uh, Incursio looks in sword form? Basically, it has two little things on the side and a gem in the middle. And at the hilt and at the very, you know, the butt of the sword or the back of the sword, there is... A, at the pummel, there's essentially is uh, Utopia's head, but just a smaller form, and it actually kind of like attached, well, attached to the sword. And when Izuku, you know, when he draws the sword, and I'll explain where he draws it from in a second, uh, it grows in size to be about, you know, the size of an average sword. When he has it in its sheath, it's about, you know, short sword sized. Allowing for easy draw and easy retractability. When he draws the blade, the two things on either side of the blade pop out, becoming wings, essentially. Metallic wings that look like utopias. And in the center, there's a blue gem that is revealed when the wings pop out. Now, Izuku can do one of two things when he draws the blade. He can leave it in blade form using overlay units to empower himself while empowering himself and making the blade sharper and stronger, etc. And etc. So... Anyway, so, and you may be wondering, you were talking about his sheath, what's so special about it? It's Utopia Ray. See, you need Utopia to awaken Utopia Ray, so why not make it the sheath? Now you may be wondering, uh, okay, what purpose is it going to serve? You know how June has his scabbard as a shield? Well, Ray is Izuku's shield. See, there's a special thing Izuku can do. When it's in base form, it's just a scabbard with Utopia, the blade of Utopia, in it. Ooh, that's a cool name. And he'll call, you know, he'll call blade form Utopia, Utopia's blade, and the shield Chaos is Chaos Shield. Now, when he puts an overlay unit into Utopia without activating, you know, this armor form, which he can do, it'll allow him to essentially do Utopia's special move. The slash, you know, the sun slash or whatever. I forget what it's called. But when he locks it into a Utopia Ray, After he pulls it out, Utopia Ray essentially uh, expands, becoming a shield. With what seems to be two hands, you know, you, you know how Utopia Ray has hand wings, essentially? Yeah, he has those gripping, like, right next to where the blade enters. And, no, oh my god. Stop throwing it over the gate. Here, take it. Lord. 
Anyway. Now, when Izuku puts an overlay unit into uh, Ray or the Chaos Shield, those two arms will release, grabbing whatever is hitting said shield, and steal its energy, giving it to Izuku, grant, granting him increased attack powers, you know, increased attack power, or it'll condense the energy into a ball and then fire it like a beam wherever Izuku's pointing. And he'll call this move Ray of, or Chaos's Ray, okay? Now, there's a third form that... Uh, you may be wondering, whoa, 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 so how does he activate Ray or Ray V? Simple. He does the same thing he does with Utopia. See, when Izuku inserts Utop the blade of Utopia into the shield, he can do one of two things. Also, he has the uh, Emperor's Key, which is the thing that always hangs around Yuma's neck. To allow him to, you know, oh, oh, I got scared for nothing. Uh, which allows him to do V, to initiate V's transformation. Okay, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. How does he activate Utopia Ray V armor? When he inserts the blade, he just has to say, Chaos Evolution! And then the two hands will grab the wings of you, the wing parts of Utopia, or the little semicircles. They'll grab each side, and then pull it down a little. And then there will be a click. After this click, Izuku will grab Utopia's blade again. The blade will be engulfed in a darker color. With the, instead of the blue gem, it'll turn red. And the pummel will actually turn in the three the two horns that utopia has will turn into one and then it'll begin to look like you know utopia ray's face after he draws the sword the shield will go with it creating a great sword because utopia ray has a great sword and then he just has to do the same thing he does with utopia to activate you know, the armor for Ray. V will be relate will be re the how he activates V's ability will be re uh, revealed later on. For now, let's get into I guess we could start with when he's on the bullhead. Or the bullhead, or whatever you want to call it. The giant airships they have. I can't believe my sister is going you know Izuku is sitting you know, on the side of the bullet head, he's relaxing. You know, Utopia in its sh sheath. And when Izuku... Also, I should mention, when Izuku's not using it, Utopia... Uh, the handle will go... Instead of from his hand, it'll go up to his um, elbow area. Basically, he has to turn the scabbard in order to pull out uh, Utopia. Okay. So he's just sitting, you know, he's looking at Utopia. He's like, I hope everyone at home's okay. If I ever find a way back. Right. I just need to figure out how I'm going to, to save this world. That's the task Astro gave me. You know, as he looks over and he sees, you know, Ruby and Yang having the bees knees conversation. You know the conversation where, you know, Yang's like, Ah, I can't believe my sister's going to Beacon with me. Sorry, I forgot the name for a minute. I so much apologize. You know, as Izuku's like, great. As we cut back to a flashback of Izuku you know, without activating Utopia, 
uh, helping Ruby fight uh, Roman and his little goons. And then we cut to the police station where you know what happens already. So, you know, Izuku is also offered a place at Beacon, and he's like, sure. Astral gave me a job, I need to get it done. And that's what he says in his head. But yes, he does accept. So, uh, you know, he's walking over, he's like, hey, hey, Little Red. Also, Midoriya has a lot more confidence because. No. He has a lot more confidence for a few reasons. Yeah. Whatever. Anyway. Uh, so... You know, Yang looks at him like, Oh, so you're the man with the silver blade and the black shield. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Yeah, that's me. Nice to meet you. I'm Izuku Midoriya. Yang Xiaolong. I bet you already know my sister's name. Uh, yeah, Ruby Rose. So you're going to Beacon, huh? Well, yeah, I was planning on going anyway, but I got a personal invitation. Oh. So, they continue their little small talk, you know, until they get off the bullhead. You know, Yang, Ruby does her whole weapon fanatic thing, which I can relate. I love weapons. Why do you think, why do you think I went so in-depth on how Utopia and Utopia Ray work? Come on. You should know me by now. I love giant weapons. Anything that can make things go boom makes me happy. So, yeah. Also, Midoriya does still have some of his leftover personality, as in he is very cautious. So, at all times, he has at least three overlay units. Now, no one can see the overlay units until he grabs them. Because either he can physically touch them, or his... Or they see them as they find the sword, or as Utopia, the Shield of Chaos, grabs uh, one of them, or pulls the energy out of the target. You know, as Yang runs off with her friends, before uh, Ruby falls into Whis's stuff, he's like, Whoa there, little Red Riding Hood. Don't want you getting hurt. You know, as Whis walks up, like, Do you know how much damage you almost caused? Calm down. I don't know who you are. You know, as Blake walks over, she's Whis... Uh... I forgot Whis's last name. Whis Sheen, from the Sheen Corporation. Oh, is not the one that's known for endangering Fauna's lives and stuff? Hmm, you know your stuff. Hey, I tend to research. Yuzuka Midoriya, Blake Belladonna. Hi, I'm Ruby Rose. Hmm? Nice to meet you, Ruby. Same here. You know, Whis is already like, ugh. And stumped off. Oh, come on. Oh, come on, Ice Queen. It's not that bad. Just your personality is colder. Than... It's colder than a corpse. You know, as she just gasps and walks away. So, yeah. Time skip after... Uh, the little speech... So, you know, they're getting ready to go to bed. You know, Yang's like, Man, it's like a giant sleepover. I don't think Dad would approve of the boys, though. 
Yang does. And, you know, Yang immediately gets a pillow to the face. We all know. You know, as Yang's like, So, Ruby, what are you doing? I'm writing a letter to those back at... Uh, single. Signal? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. I don't know. Oh, that's so... Dog pillow to the face. Hey, I didn't even say anything mean. Ugh, you're so Yang. <laughs> anyway, so they look over, they're looking around, they see Izuku, you know, he's still fully dressed. Now, Izuku, uh, he kinda has the same, you know, June vibe going on, or wait, is it June? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how you say it, June. You know what I mean. Hoodie, the breastplate, you know, you know. But he actually pulls it off, like a champ. Man's is a boss. Anyway, so continuing forward, uh, let's continue. Uh, you know, they walk over and they're like, "Hey, why aren't you getting ready for bed?" Oh, I, <laughs> sorry. My semblance doesn't let me sleep. He's not wrong, because he's constantly producing so much aura, his semblance has to compensate by either, you know, slowly take draining his aura away, or creating Xyz units. And right now, he's basically making as many Xyz units as he's going to need, or overlay units. Because he knows tomorrow's about to be a r the real test. So, they're like, wait, what is your semblance anyway? Oh, it's Xyz. Xyz? Yeah. It basically allows me to push myself over my limit. But, in order to do that, my semblance has to cannibalize my aura. Creating, you know, as he holds out his hand and makes one of them appear. And it's... It's a really bright uh, color. It's a uh, light, you know, it's basically white. A glowing yellow ball. These, they're called overlay units. I can either use them to enhance myself or my weapons or do something a little special. As Ruby's like, wait, what do you mean by special? We well, are just gonna have to see a little, right? Yo. My dude Midoriya got game. Hold on, what have I created? Have I created something so powerful? Oh no, I've created a monster. It's unlocked for you. Hmm? My head is killing me. Sorry. Anyway, uh... Okay. Anyway, so as Midoriya, you know, says that, you know, Ruby, she loves up to her name, <laughs> if you know what I mean, face all red, uh, as Yang's like, my, you're the flirt, well, little, well, little dragon, let's hope you never meet the Slayer. <laughs> I'm sorry, he said what? Yeah, that's what he said. Oh, dear God. What have you created? Honestly, I don't know anymore. So, yeah. Don't question the banter. Okay, here you go. So, anyway. You know, Ring's like... Wow. <laughs> you know, as Blake walks over. Hey there, Midoriya. I mean, hey there, Izuku. Oh, hey there, Blake. You know, as, uh, she's, as Ruby says, so wait, what's your weapon even look like? Oh, as he raises his left arm, this is Exodia. Not a, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Exodia and Utopia sound so alike to me. Like, for some reason, if someone says Utopia, 
and I try, like, it's confusing. I, it's probably just my ADHD. Yeah, whatever. So, Midoriya, you know, he's like, Utop this is Utopia. Ooh, what's it do? Well, after I draw the sword, it become it grows into a long sword, and the scabbard becomes a shield. And there's a few other abilities that it has when I use my semblance on it, but, you know, as he, you know, the light's still just floating around him, leaving a trail. You know, it's floating around his head, leaving, like, a halo trail above it. But, anyway, enough about me. What are y'all's weapons? You know, as Yang's like, I've been meaning to ask you. Hmm? What is it? As she's like, what, well, I, what's the matter? Cat got your tongue? You know, as she, like, she goes wide-eyed. How did, you know, as Whis runs over, some of us are trying to sleep. Sorry about that ice, sorry about that snowflake. What? Fix what? There's nothing to fix. Is this what you're talking about? Anyway. Anyways, she's right. We should probably go to bed. You know, as the overlay unit flies back into Izuku's hand. Hey, where'd that weird little ball go? Well, that's a part of my semblance. See, I actually have over a few hundred of these things. Huh? Yeah, no one can see them. Only I can. They're just floating. Everywhere. It's really bright in here for me. Huh, so I guess that helps if... I guess you have built-in night vision, then. Well, I guess you could say that, dragon. Anyway, come on. I say it's time to, for y'all to go to bed. Well, well, what about you? You know, as he looks at Ruby, I'll be fine. I normally don't sleep. It's been a while since I've slept. You know. As they all look at him, kind of saddened, but they nod and they go off in their own respective directions. And then, time to get next day, they're at the cliff. No, wait, they're not at the cliff. I forgot about the pariah scene. I need him to meet pariah. I love pariah. And I'm very angry that she is dead. Also, yeah, spoiler. I probably should have said that. I, I, I love pariah, okay? Par pariah, if pariah was real, I would want to date her. That's just a weird me thing. Come on. Anyway. So, you know, Izuku's going into the locker room to, uh, you know, just to wait as as he runs into Pariah. And he's like, oh, oh, I'm so sorry. Here, let me give you a hand. You know, as he helps her up. Th thank you. As Whis runs over... Par you're Pariah Nikos. You know, she does her whole spiel about how they'd be the perfect team. As Izuku is like, well, you don't know how teams are going to be picked, Whis. And plus, it's Pariah's decision. Anyway, I'm making a video. should probably throw this away. Um, so according to her, she didn't say that, which you pro you heard it. Yeah, so she's being a little brat about that. I'm going to eat your fries, though, because you said I could. Hmm? Yeah. What? No. Anyway. Shut up. Anyway. Oh, God. Continuing forward. Uh, again, Midoriya, you know. June does his thing. Sorry about that. 
Pariah throws her spear. You know, she gets her spear back. Uh, now we're just gonna go straight to the cliffs. And Dory's like, all right. You know, after the speech, he's like, all right, Oz, launch me. You know, as he says, running up to the plate, as he jumps on it, Oz launches him. Woohoo! You know, he takes out, Exo he draws Exodia. Not a, dang it, I keep, I'm gonna keep doing that. He pulls out, you know, he draws Utopia's blade. Immediately putting the shield, crashing. Do you need to go outside? I'm going to my room. Okay. So, again, Utopia, uh, he uses Chaos Shield to basically, you know, slow down his fall and make it not as bad. After he does such, he, you know, he starts taking out as many, as many, 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 uh, grim as he can. Until he runs into Pariah. Now, I know what y'all are thinking. Wait, is Joe, June getting kicked out? Yes. Uh... Honestly, I like June, but, or how you pronounce it, June, Joan, whatever. I like him, but he's, eh, in my eyes at least, but I don't know. So, yeah. Again, uh, mm, she says, oh, hey, Midoriya. Hmm? Oh, hey, Pariah. Come on, I think the place is this way. You know, as he, as he says that, they walk out of it into a clearing. Huh. Well, looks like, looks like I was right. As, you know, he's like, why not grab the... You pick one. Hmm? Uh, okay, then. She grabs the rook. Huh. The rook symbolizes strength. I like that. Good pick. As he pats her on the back. You know. As Yang and Blake show up, oh, looks like we're not the first ones here. Hey, dragon. Uh-oh. You know, as they hear screaming. Huh? Hmm. Looks like someone ran into some grim. As they see June falling from the sky. Is he gonna be okay? I mean, probably? Does anyone want to catch him? Not particularly. Wow. You know, Midoriya thinks, wow, that's a cold cat. All right. You know, as he stabs Utopia into the ground, I got him. <clears throat> you know, as he's like, you know what? Might as well flex. As he grabs an overlay unit, slamming it into his chest, him, you know, his aura immediately ex pretty much exploding, making his hair spike up and start, you know, basically his eyes and his hair turn into the Xyz network. Basically, man's got galaxy hair and his green eyes are now just galaxies. I know, it's, it probably would look really cool. As he jumps up, you know, grabbing June by his hood, then spinning around, and then just seemingly jumping off of thin air, crash landing, dropping June. Stopping himself right before he crashes, again, looking like he's stopping himself using thin air, and then dropping June. And then picking back up Utopia and putting it over his shoulder. Done and done. You know, as his hair starts to die down and his eyes turn back to normal. Oof. Man. I always forget how tiring using one of those things is. What was that? Hmm? Oh. I t thought I told you about my semblance, Pariah. That was your semblance? Yeah. Again, 
my aura is too much even for my body to handle, so I use I have to constantly use my semblance so it doesn't over so it doesn't kill me. Creating these overlay units or exceeds units. Anyway, so you know, uh, ow, Nora and Ren show up. They grab their uh, rook piece. Uh, uh, Ruby falls out of the sky. You know, the Nevermore and the Death Stalker show up. You know, as they all group together. As Yang's like, well, now we can die together. Ruby says, not if I have anything to say about it. You know, before Izuku just <sighs> grabs her hood. How about you guys stay back? Huh? What are you going to do? Fight them alone? That's the plan. Wait, I wasn't serious. Oh, but I am. Hey, Ruby. Huh? Huh? You're wondering what I was talking about when I said Utopia ha has a little secret. Yeah? But I'll show you what that is. Rise! Utopia! As a... You know, two or three Xyz units fly into the gem. As the blade then begins to rattle and start expanding. As it just explodes into golden light engulfing Midoriya. Giving him... Utopia. Number 39... Hold on. Giving him... As everyone, you know, is pretty much blinded by the light, as they uncover their eyes, they see, you know, just... Also, Midoriya in this is, you know, average height. Which, hold on, I need to look something up right quick. He's six foot, well, no, he's 5'11", because 5'11 is, like, average height. So, he's 5'11", but when he activates Utopia's armor, he becomes seven foot tall. You know, he gets quite bigger, and you know, the blades. Currently, Izuku in Utopia's armor is just floating. You know, wings expanded, arms crossed, and the eyes aren't glowing. As then, you know, out of nowhere... A whole lot of Grimm starts showing up. As Izuku opens his eyes, Utopia's eyes open as well. Just boof, a bright red color. As he draws both of the blades and then just disappears. Boof. Now you may be wondering, where'd the Chaos Shield go? It's still on Izuku. It's just when he's in Utopia form, Utopia has uh, Utopia Ray's left arm. You know, Izuku's just cutting through a whole bunch of Grim. A whole bunch of bigger Grim. AKA a giant snake Grim. You know, the giant snake Grim. I can't remember the name of it. The Nevermore, like two more Nevermores, and like three Death Stalkers. And a bunch of other really big Grim starts showing up. As you know, he dashes back to the group. You know, they've been fighting the, some of the smaller ones while he's been taking on some of the bigger ones. He's like, Okay, this is starting to get a little tiring. Just use an overlay unit. You know, as Blake says, just use an overlay unit. He's like, I can't. Why not? Because it does something different. H huh? When I'm in Utopia, every time I use an overlay unit, it activates its absolute defense. No. Ruby, 
you know, she's like, well, what do you mean absolute defense? Whatever, what does it sound like? Anything that attacks me while I'm in that form, it sends the attack back at double the strength. I have another idea, but it's going to take a minute for me to turn it on. And that idea is, it's time to let chaos run rampant. I don't like the way you phrased that. You know, as Whis is like, I don't like the way you phrased that, but do we have any other options? Well, we're currently surrounded, and there's like five nethermore, nevermores in the sky. There's a there's a giant, there's three or four giant snakes and like six giant scorpions while we're being surrounded by hundreds of little wolves and bears. I think we're out of options. So has everyone agreed on this? Yeah, it looks like we don't have much of a choice. Good. I'm gonna need a few seconds of cover. Utopia! You know, he holds his hand out in front of him. Release! As Utopia returns to a blade. What are you doing now? You know, as he, you know, shoves the, as he sheaths the sword, as they're like, what, we're just giving up? Nope. Watch this. No, he doesn't sheath the blade. The shield appears, and he holds out his right hand. As, you know, the two little, uh, arms pop out, you know, and... When the arms pop out, the sides of the shields move as well because they symbolize the wings. As they grab, each one of the arms grabs an overlay unit. As he points in the direction, you know, he points the shield in the direction. As they merge the overlay units together. Chaos Ray! <laughs> okay. That was a little much. You know, as... A red beam of energy fires forward, wiping out a whole bunch of Grimm in that general direction while also making essentially a getaway path straight for, straight towards the, uh, the cliff so they can get back to Ospen. Let's move! You know, as they all start running, the Grimm chasing them, trying to cut them off. As, you know, Ruby's like, they're gaining on us! Don't you think I know that? They're getting closer! Ruby, now is not the time! I'm doing something. I'm... Oh, don't care. Shush. What? It doesn't even matter. Anyway. Uh, so, Izuku, you know, is like, Ruby, shush, please, trying to think. As he, you know, he's saying that while running. As like, what, you coming up with another plan? Because the last one worked pretty well. Yang, I do not need the sass. Just saying. I swear. Uh, once we get to the bridge, everyone cross it. I have an idea. Ugh, of course you do. We st I'm gonna need you to trust me here. Right. Priya! The bridge is made of metal. So, use your semblance to snap the support beams. How do you know about- I know a lot of things. Do it. R right. Come on. Nah. I'm taking a stand. I'm about to do something really stupid, so I'm gonna need you guys to run. You know, as he starts raising his right and left hands. What are you about to do? I'm about to let chaos run. As he, you know, then stabs the blade into the shield. Oh, this is gonna hurt. I remember the last time I did this, I was out for a month. No, I was out for like three days. Hopefully every yes. Hopefully everything goes well. Collapse it now. But right, wait, don't. You know, as Ruby cries out, don't. But it was too late. She had already collapsed the bridge. 
leaving Izuku on the other side with hundreds of Grimm coming at him. Man, I really hope this works. As he reaches, you know, as he touches his breastplate, as the Emperor's key appears, he takes it off, and then attaches it to the back of the sh shield. No. Yeah, he plugs it into the back of the shield. As then he grab, you know, he's like, I will, chaos shall run, and cut, slice through my enemies like a, like a never-ending cyclone. Chaos evolution. Fifth. Chaos evolution. Five. As, the gem in Utopia's blade and in the shield turn red. As the uh, handle for the blade begins to extend, Izuku grabbing it as it pops the, bl the sword, the shield pops off of Izuku's arm as he spins the uh, handle around. As it begins, as it unfolds into a scythe. As he's like... happens the after the armor completely consumes him he gets into he holds the scythe behind him while getting low to the ground to where his hand touches and then he launches himself forward at the grim at blinding speeds he starts cutting grim to shreds and if not even being able to be hit you know, he's just taking them out, left, right, and center. As you hear a dark chuckle. <laughs> it's been too long since I've been able to have some fun. Overlay units. You know, as like four or five overlay units appear, as Midoriya just... As... You know, Midoriya slashes through them all using his scythe. The scythe essentially beginning to glow with an immense red energy. Now. Harvest Festival. You know, as all of the red spots you saw on Utopia Ray V, if you didn't see them, just rewind the video a little bit. No! Leave that on. As all of those spots begin to glow with an immense red light. As he launches himself, just destroying all of the Grim. Like, they're pretty much all gone. As he, dis you know, he finally kills the last uh, Deathstalker, he then throws his scythe. In, you know, after spinning his scythe, he throws it into the air, spinning, hitting a Nevermore. As then, he immediately just, in a flash of red light, he's already there. Grabbing it and slicing off the Nevermore's head. While using its body to crash into the rest of the Nevermores, sending them to the ground. As he then, as you see them just get shredded. As then, you know... You begin to see, at the very head of the scythe, the Emperor's key begin to glow, you know, the tip of the, the round part of the Emperor's key begin to glow with a blue light. So he's like, he set me on a timer! I'm gonna... You know, as we see a bright... A red and black energy engulfing Midoriya. 
that's being overtaken by a very light blue color before shattering and the key flying back into Midoriya's chest plate closing his breastplate closing as he falls to the ground as Utopia bl the blade of Utopia and the chaos shield separate yes that is how he activates Utopia Ray V. See, what happened was he can normally use it without the timer, but he loses control. So he sets a timer on the thing, even, and even if he does lose control, the key will immediately take away Ray's, con you know, Ray B's control over Midoriya's body allowing him to essentially wake up but if he has used a lot of energy again he passes out you know as once the blade returns to normal it's in its sheath it, the color scheme is back you know as you know pariah immediately you know with the help of ruby gets over there, grabs them, and then they go back. Passing the initiation. Now we skip to, uh, you know, the team thing. So, June is kicked out, unfortunately. And, uh, the team name, I'm just gonna let y'all decide what the team name is gonna be. Because I don't know what the team name should be. You guys can decide, but Izuku is going to be the team leader. So we cut to the dorms. You know, Izuku's laying down in his dorm. You know, he's having a nightmare. Everyone's really concerned for him, but they just leave him alone. And that's going to be all for this time, guys. It's probably over like 50 minutes.